We're going to do some robot speed painting. Most of you might have played this before. Uh, you know the rules. We paint, you guess. And I give some clues along the way. So this person was a peasant who became a military leader inspired by visions. She was a pivotal lifting the siege of Orleans during a major European conflict in the 15th century. She famously burned at the stake. This French heroine is now a saint. Anybody know this one? I think the clues were pretty good. You guys ought to be able to get this. Who knows? Who has it? Who, who knows the answer to this one? It's Joan of Arc, of course. Joan of Arc. All right, moving on. Number two. These are famous historical figures, by the way. I think I forgot to mention that. We do five historical figures, and then we move on to a new category. So originally known by a different surname, this figure adopted X to signify the loss of his ancestral identity. A prominent voice in the American civil rights movement, he advocated for the rights of African Americans using a more militant approach than some of his compatriots. He was assassinated in 1965. This leader was a key figure in the Nation of Islam before ideology shifted towards Sunni Islam. Who knows? There it is! I see the answer on the board! Malcolm X is indeed the correct answer. Moving on, number three. This inventor had an intense rivalry with another well-known inventor, Thomas Edison. He was best known for his contributions to the development of alternating current electrical systems. Who knows? No. Nope. Still not the right answer. We, you know, if you hold on to that answer long enough, you may get one. A pioneer in electrical engineering, his last name is now used as a unit of magnetic flux density. I see the correct answer. That is correct. This is Nikolai Tesla. Nikolai Tesla is the correct answer. Here we go, here we go. Who looks like him? <laughs> Often referred to as the lady of civil rights, she was not the first to resist bus segregation. Her refusal to give up her seat sparked the Montgomery bus boycott in 1955. Who knows? There you go, I see the correct answer on the board. Now you're getting the hang of it. This activist op, uh, actions led to the landmark Supreme Court ruling that declared segregation on public buses unconstitutional. And it is indeed Rosa Parks. You had it, very good, very good. Okay, this is the last one in our historical figures category. Another historical figure coming up. This figure was an early explorer whose expeditions are notorious. And they're notorious for their impact on the indigenous populations. He led an expedition that caused the fall of a major Mesoamerican empire. He was known for his role in the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire. This conquistador, this conquistador's name is sometimes spelled C-O-R-T-E-S. <laughs> yes, I see that someone had the correct answer up there. Very good. 
This is Hernando Cortez. Hernando Cortez. All right, we're going to change the categories. We're going to now do A-list Hollywood stars. So this actor has his own production company named after a Greek mythological figure. He was known for his roles in Fight Club and Ocean's Eleven. He won his first acting Oscar for his role in the 2019 film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I actually didn't know he won an award for that. That's very good. There it is. I see the correct answer on the board. He was really good at that. That's correct. It is indeed kind of a gnarly picture of Brad Pitt. <laughs> looks a little devious in this one. All right, moving on to number two on our A-list Hollywood stars. She began her major acting career on a popular TV sitcom set in the 1970s at the tender age of 14 years old. She provided the voice for a character in the animated series Family Guy. This actress starred opposite Natalie Portman in the psychological thriller Black Swan. Did you guys see the... Uh... No, that's not correct. That's not correct. It's a good guess, but that's not correct. Um, you guys see Black Swan? That was a pretty crazy movie. Kind of dark, like in a, you were like inside the mental, the person's mental breakdown. But no, Mila Kunas, Mila Kunas, of course. All right, moving on to number three, A-list Hollywood stars directed and starred in a satirical action comedy, Tropic Thunder. He is famous for his portrayal of a hapless male model. In Zoolander, one of my favorite movies of all time, Zoolander. This actor came from a, a family of comedians and is known for his role in Meet the Parents and Night at the Museum. Who's got this one? I think I've just got a slow internet going. You guys should have this one. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows this one? There it is. There it is. That is correct. Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller is the correct answer. All right. Number four in our A-list Hollywood stars. She made her directorial debut with the roller derby film called Whip It. I don't think I saw that she starred in E.T., The Extraterrestrial, directed by Steven Spielberg when she was just seven years old. This actress is a member of the famous family of actors and hosted her own talk show. I guess this looks like her. Maybe this doesn't look like her enough for you guys to get this one. Go by the clues. Go by the clues. <laughs> Who knows? Started E.T. at age of seven. Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. And she does have her own show in it. All right, last one in the A-list stars. This actor and musician achieved fame with a TV show set in Bel Air. He was also known for the Men in Black film series. And he also won his first Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in, a, in the film King Richard. Obviously, you guys know this one. 
who's going to be the first to post it on the board on our slightly slow internet <laughs> there it is i see the correct answer yes indeedy this is indeed will smith will smith <laughs> correct all right we're going to change categories again we're going to go to famous historic buildings now let's see if you guys can handle this one this prehistoric monument is composed of rings of standing stones, each around 13 feet high, located in Wiltshire, Wiltshire, England. Its construction dates back to as early as 3000 BC. It's often associated with the Druid ceremonies. It remains a mystery why this structure was ever built. There it is, I see the correct answer. You've got the quick, quick internet, it looks like. <laughs> Good. All right. Maybe you guys are going to be better at these historic buildings. <laughs> Stonehenge is indeed the correct answer. Stonehenge. 3000 BC. I didn't know that. That is a long time ago. All right. You guys ready for some more historic buildings? Here we go. Number two. This building is dedicated to the goddess Athena. This structure is a prime example of ancient Greek architecture. It was constructed during the fifth century BC. It has served multiple roles from temple to mosque. This iconic temple is situated on a rocky outcrop above the city of Athens. All right, so I see the correct answer for the building itself. Now, what is the location where the building is located? What, what's the location called on the hill above Athens? Who knows that one? The Parthenon is the, is the correct for the building, and it is the Acropolis, the Acropolis. All right, number three, famous Famous for its rock cut architecture, this site is also known as Al Khazne. Al Khazne. Featured in several Hollywood films, including one with iconic archaeologist character Indiana Jones. This elaborate facade was carved directly from the sandstone to serve as a mausoleum ancient city of Petra. So I don't know if you know the name. Petra is correct. So you got that part of it. Does anybody know the actual name of that particular building? Anybody know? The treasury. The treasury at Petra. Very good. All right, you guys are doing pretty good at these buildings. So number four. Originally built as a series of several walls and fortifications, this structure stretches over 13,000 miles, if you can believe it. It was constructed primarily during the Ming Dynasty to protect against invasions. There it is, I see the correct answer, very good. One of the most famous world landmarks, this structure is often mistakenly noted as visible from space. There it is, everybody's got it. I don't know if it's the best uh, painting of the subject, but this is indeed the Great Wall of China. The Great Wall of China. There it is. Okay, last one on our building, little building series here. Number five, this mausoleum was commissioned by Mughal Emperor in memory of his beloved wife. It is located in Agra, India. It is recognized by its large white dome and four minarets. It's often considered a symbol of love 
This iconic structure is made of white marble and attracts millions of visitors annually. There you go, everybody's got it. Everybody knows their historic architecture. Very good. Good job on those. Taj Mahal, Taj Mahal in India. One of the, I guess not one of the wonders of the world, but often added to the list, I think. Okay, let's move on to a, another whole, whole other category. Let's do popular 1970s TV shows, okay? This sitcom revolves around the comedic misunderstandings and antics of roommates sharing an apartment in Santa Monica. The main characters pretend that one of their roommates is gay to appease their conservative landlord. You guys remember the day of the, the television show? John Ritter stars in this slapstick heavy series about living situations and social mores of the time. You guys don't remember the name of this, huh? John Ritter, Suzanne Summers, Joyce DeWitt. Not a couple. This is Three's Company. Three's Company. All right, there we go. These are going to be harder for you guys. <laughs> this groundbreaking sitcom is known for its portrayal of controversial issues and a brash, outspoken lead character. The show featured a working-class family living in Queens, New York, led by the bigoted but lovable Archie Bunker. Archie Bunker. It was one of the first television shows to address subjects like racism, homosexuality, and women's rights directly. I don't know if you remember, but the uh, son-in-law was named Meathead. Meathead. You guys remember the name of the, the show? It won like lots of, lots of Emmys, lots of awards. This is called All in the Family. You guys are going to learn something on this group tonight. <laughs> All right, here we go. Try this one. Set in Boulder, Colorado, this sitcom involves an alien who comes to Earth from planet Orc in an egg-shaped spacecraft. The alien's mission is to observe human behavior, and he reports back to his superior, Orson. Robin Williams stars as Mort and his greeting Nanu Nanu became one of the show's catchphrases. You guys remember the name of the show? Robin Williams played an alien. Hilarity ensues. <laughs> I actually didn't watch this one that much. I didn't think it was that, that funny. I like Robin Williams later in his career. Really, yeah, it's kind of Mork and Mindy was the name of the show. Mork and Mindy. All right, number four in the 1970s Hollywood shows. This crime drama features three women working for a private detective company, taking on high-risk cases. The lead characters are known for their code names. Sabrina, Jill, and Kelly. <laughs> the show is well-known for its trio of female leads who work for a never seen boss named Charlie, who communicates to them through a speakerphone. I don't, yeah. <laughs> you guys have probably seen the more recent movie. <laughs> correct, correct. Charlie's Angels is correct. Do you remember the actresses for this? Do you remember the three actresses? Who knows? Who knows one of the actresses? Farrah Fawcett? Yeah, Farrah Foster was one of them for sure. Okay, well, good job. Okay, last one in this category. This sitcom follows two single women working as bottle campers in a fictional Milwaukee brewery. And 
the late 1950s and early 1960s. The characters are best friends and roommates who cope with their blue collar working environment with humor and resilience. It is a spin-off from the original show called Happy Days and includes the iconic opening theme song with the chant Shalemi Shamami Ozum Prairie Incorporated. I don't remember that. I can't even say it. Anyway, I don't know if you guys remember this show or not. Very popular spinoff from Happy Days. Laverne and Shirley. Laverne and Shirley. Okay, so uh, we now have a very hard type of famous writers. You guys ready for famous writers? This author has often blended magical realism and historical fiction in his work. He was born in India. He has written extensively about the impacts of colonialism and religion. He began, became internationally famous and very controversial due to his fourth novel entitled The Satanic Verses, which led to death threats from Islamic extremists. I don't know if you remember that, this guy had a fatwa called on him, fatwa. And uh, eventually some extremists got to him and uh, stabbed him and put one of his eyes out. Uh, this was like maybe a dozen years after the fatwa was, was called. You guys remember the name of this famous writer, Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie. That was pretty hard. That was the hardest one. So it get easier. Known as the master of the macabre and mystery, he was one of the earliest American practitioners of the short story. He is also considered the inventor of the detective fiction genre. He's famous for poems like The Raven and tales like The Telltale Heart. He works often his works often explore themes of death and macabre. Who remembers this famous writer? I remember in you know, probably middle school reading that Telltale Heart scared the heck out of you. That's correct. Edgar Allan Poe. Very good. Ed Edgar Allan Poe is the correct answer. All right, here's a challenging one for you guys. Originally from Russia, this writer philosopher developed a philosophical system she called objectivism. She wrote two bestsellers, and I highly recommend both of these. These were both super influential in my life. Atlas Shrugged and The Fountainhead, which promote her ideas of rational self-interest and individualism. Her philosophy has been a significant influence in the libertarian and conservative American politics. Who knows? Who wrote Atlas Shrugged and The Fountainhead? If you haven't ever read those, at least watch the movie or do the clip notes or something. lady's name was Anne Rand with the Ann spelled A-Y-N. Anne Rand. All right, you'll get this one, I bet you. The American writer grew up along the Mississippi River and used his childhood experiences as inspiration for some of the most famous works. His real name was Samuel Langhorn Clemens but he is better known by his pen name. He is famous for the adventures of Tom Sawyer and the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. He is often called the father of American literature. There you go, we got that one on the board. That is indeed correct, correct. Famous writers, second to last category. That is indeed Mark Twain is the correct answer. Mark Twain. All right, this last one's interesting. Let's see if you guys can get it. This British author 
was known for his clear writing style and strong opposition to totalitarianism. His experience during the Spanish Civil War significantly influenced his political views and writing. He was best known for his dystopian novels, 1984 and The Animal Farm, which explore themes of surveillance, propaganda, and authoritarianism. Authoritarianism. <laughs> uh, oh, look at that. The correct answer is on the board. Very good. Yeah, pretty relevant. 1984, no doubt. All right, well, that's the end of the writer's category. That was pretty hard. That, that is our hard category for sure. All right, our last category now of the evening is World Explorers. World Explorers. This Norse explorer is believed to have been the first European to set foot on North American continent, predating Columbus by many centuries. Originating from Iceland, he established a Norse settlement at a place called Vinland around the year 1000. He is often celebrated in Nordic cultures and has a U.S. holiday named after him, observed in October. Know that. Who knows this explorer? This is a Scandinavian gentleman. This is the Viking, Leif Erikson. That, I see you had the correct answer there. I do see that. <laughs> All right, this Venetian merchant traveled farther than any of his contemporaries, reaching Asia and the court of Kublai Khan. His journeys are documented in a work known as the Travels of Marco Polo. You never read that that's another great one to read his journeys are documented in a work known as the travels of marco polo which many europeans um, with a comprehensive look at the asian lands and culture his name of course is marco polo so i think the clue gave that one away chat gpt that was a bad clue his adventures inspired many, including Christopher Columbus. Marco Polo. Pretty good picture. All right, this next one's pretty hard. He was born in Tangier. This Moroccan explorer traveled for nearly 30 years covering over 75,000 miles across the Islamic world and beyond. His extensive travels are documented in his travel log, which provides a detailed account of the places he visited, stretching from Africa to Southeast Asia. He is recognized as one of the greatest travelers of all time, having visited most of the known Islamic world, as well as many non-Muslim lands. Of course, that was the time when Muslim world was quite large. Who knows this one? Maybe a little more obscure. Extensive travels documented in his travel law. This guy's name was Ibn Batuta. Batuta. Ibn Batuta. All right, this Italian explorer is often controversial controversially credited with discovering the Americas in 1492. His expeditions funded by Spain were originally intended to find westward sea route to Asia. There we go. We got the correct answer on that one. He made a total of, of four voyages across the Atlantic Ocean, which opened up the Western Hemisphere to European colonization. And you are correct. This is indeed a rendering of Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus. 
Yeah, supposedly Lee Erickson discovered America in 1000. Hmm. Okay, last one. Last one of the evening, and I guarantee it's hard. You might want to have your personal assistants ready to help you. This Dutch seafarer was first known European to reach the islands of Tasmania, New Zealand, and Fiji. During his voyages, he mapped substantial portions of Australia, also known as New Holland. Did you know that? Australia was known as New Holland. The sea between Australia and New Zealand bears his name, commemorating his explorations in the region. Anybody know this lesser, lesser known explorer? Sounds like he did a lot of work. Dutch seafarer. Spent a lot of time in Australia and New Zealand. And the island of Tasmania, which is a clue. It, this guy's name is Abel Tasman. Abel Tasman. All right, guys. Well, you made it through that round. Thank you for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. That concludes our show this evening. Come back next time, every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Good night, guys.